Ask webinar in the question and answer box. And if you could please through the webinar, if you have questions, feel free to ask them in that Q&A box, not the chat box. That way everybody can see the question and the answer. And we'll also be saving that transcript into Google Docs and sharing that with you later on. You can also see in the chat box that I have sent a link out to where all of our other previous webinars are, so you can feel free to watch any of those recorded webinars or access those resources. And so now I'm going to move the presenting uh, role over to our Google Apps for Education certified trainer who is leading the webinar today. So Greg, feel free to begin sharing the application, and uh, you can also go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks a lot, Dana. Um, Greg Benedict Grab, um, and I'm going to be sharing about digital science notebooks today. Um, let me just make sure that you can see my slideshow. So we don't this see it quite yet. You still need to share uh, share the application or share your desktop. Well, it may be because I'm in full screen mode. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to share. Share an application. Great, it's coming up. Okay. You see it just fine, so thanks, Greg. And just a quick reminder to everybody who joined, if you have questions throughout the webinar, please ask them in that Q&A box with the little question mark inside it, and that way I can answer your questions throughout the webinar and also surface them to Greg um, while he's delivering the webinar and at the end when he has time for Q&A. And you know, before I go ahead, can when I add the um, the time player, can I do it right now so that, or should I wait till I'm going to show a little video clip? No, I'll have to switch that later on. I'll switch it later on. Okay. We'll get started. So this is my first slide. It's called Digital Science Notebooks, and I'm Greg Benedict Grab, and my um, Twitter handle and email are up there. Um, and here's a little bit just about, wait, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a Google Apps for Education Certified Trainer. I, I I'm a science teacher as well, which is why I'm interested in um, digital science notebooks, and I received the Prential Award for Excellence in Science Teaching in 2010. Um, I'm the director of T21, which is a uh, institute for 21st century teachers, um, and I'll put in a link for that later. Um, and, of course, my Twitter. And, and you can feel free to tweet or use the, um, the use any other um, WebEx features. Um, to kind of send questions or just let me know what you're thinking, feel free to just send all your questions in as I'm going. Um, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give, give this presentation kind of in two parts. Uh, the first part I'm going to talk um, about what I've done this past year with, with Digital Science Notebooks, give you really a fee for um, some of the features of it and wh why I think it's really beneficial. Um, and then during the final portion um, of the webinar, I'm going to get up a chance for you guys to kind of experiment um, with some of the Google tools and, and show you kind of a more hands-on and, um, and walk you through some of the pieces of it. So that's what today's going to look like. Um, I just start with um, why I decided to focus on digital science notebooks. Um, for science notebooks are a really um, important part of my classroom. Um, and so I figure if I'm going to move to digital science notebook, the notebooks, there must be, there's got to be some real benefit to it or something that's going to make science teaching better. Um, and so these are some of the things that kind of I focused on um, before I tried my experiment in science, in digital science notebooks. One is um, access. Um, you can really... Um, have a lot more access to the actual notebook. Um, both teacher has access, um, the student has access, um, and there's access, there's there's kind of the question of, of time of access and all of those things. So you can access it from a lot of different places at a lot of different times. Um, a big part of my classroom is also um, collaboration, working, um, students working together. And so I try to make 
um, I think digi a digital notebook would allow for a lot of that collaboration to take place, and a lot of the kind of interaction that you're looking for in the classroom would be more powerful, and we'll look at that later. Um, even though there's, there's always a learn learning curve with every technology, um, it's important to me that be an intuitive notebook that they can kind of pick up quickly so there's benefit right from the beginning. Um, and so that's something I wanted to focus on. Um, and a big piece um, of what I'm going to talk about today is, is making the classroom learner-centered um, and having the, the students kind of be at the center of what's going on. Um, and I think the digital science notebook allows for a lot of that to happen as well. I um, mean, all these are what, really what I call 21st century learning. Um, and a lot of these skills are skills that they're going to need um, as they go forward um, into higher grades and in the workplace later. Um, so I saw a lot of advantages to the digital science notebook um, and was excited to kind of explore what I could do with it. Um, before I talk about what I've done with the digital science notebook, I just want to give you a picture of what I had before that. So two years ago, um, and this is, I'm talking primarily about a fifth grade class that I was teaching. Um, and the fifth graders had a paper notebook two years ago. And it was a pretty exciting notebook. It had, you know, I let them decorate the outside, as you can see here. Um, and I chose one that was a little different. You'll see there were lines at the, on the bottom of the page and a blank space on the top. So I wanted to, to allow for different kinds of um, expressing themselves scientifically. Um, and in fact, I could do a whole, we could have a whole webinar just talking about um, the role of science notebooking and, and how important that is. Um, but I just want to give you a picture of what I did with the notebooks before I went digital and then kind of how I transferred it over. And I think that will kind of give you a piece of, of what um, the kinds of things you might do in your classroom. Um, and even though I, when I did this experiment, I kind of went 100%, I went Show, moved everything over from paper to digital. I, there's a lot of examples I've seen in classrooms where people go kind of piece by piece. So it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. Thing. Um, here you see um, in this notebook I had a table of contents. I wanted them to be able to find what they needed in the notebook. Um, I did a lot with having them kind of show what they already knew about a topic. Um, here I, on sinking and floating I had what they knew and what they wanted to know. Um, and they made a T-chart here, um, and you can look at some of those ideas. Um, drawing was a big part of my notebook, especially I do a unit on plants, um, and I wanted them to kind of be able to represent what they were seeing and kind of make connections. And here on the left, you'll see I gave them a little um, handout that they pasted in there um, with some important vocabulary words. It's kind of a tool. The notebook was a tool for them to kind of explore their thinking, but also kind of um, get key vocabulary and, and build their understanding over time. Um, and actually, reflective writing was a big part of my notebook. Um, I spent a lot of time having them kind of reflect on what they think was happening. This goes back to thinking and thing, and the students writing about not only what they saw, but kind of what they think and why they think it happened. Um, and of course, the whole um, lab report process from um, you know, planning an experiment to analyzing it, um, collecting all the data, all of that stuff can go in the notebook. And so I really had a lot of um, demands for my notebook. It, it a lot of pieces of the, of the science curriculum. Um, and so I kind of was seeing how can I make all of this work in a digital notebook. And so the past year, um, I decided to just switch over entirely um, from paper to digital. Um, and that's kind of what this slide shows here. We'll see here. OK, so the first thing I did was I wanted to think about um, you know, what tools could I use to make a digital science notebook. Um, and what I found was that um, Google really offered the most in terms of kind of a whole platform creating the notebook. It's got, you know, it's got a calendar system. It has sites, which I use some. It has Google Docs, um, which I'll focus on primarily today, which is a whole suite of, of applications. Um, and so it kind of do all of the pieces I needed um, to create a digital science notebook um, that was interactive. I looked at some other things. Um, I looked at, I think, Evernote and some of the other um, applications out there. But I found that Google 
really was the most powerful one, and it, it kind of was also expanding so, so quickly that I, I felt like it was really going to serve me in terms of creating this digital environment. Um, so the thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to first focus on what I did with text documents. In Google Docs, um, one of the types of Google Docs is the text document. Um, and I just want to kind of give you a sense of what this document, what a Google text document can do um, opposed to the paper notebook and kind of what I got. For, for one, it's, it's kind of the replacement of Microsoft Word. So um, in a way, students already came in know they use it really well because it's very similar to that and they, they have um, a lot of experience using word processors. Um, but unlike the paper notebook, um, it stores a revision history. So within the um, document, you can kind of keep track of what's happened over time. If you're, if you're not happy with the revision you made, you can go back and see what it looked like before. That's useful not only for the students, but also for the um, teacher to kind of see the student's process over time. Um, it also auto-saves, which is really nice, so you don't end up losing anything, which is sometimes a challenge with um, online um, applications. Um, collaboration is a big part of it, um, and we'll look at that a little later when, when we get into the hands-on piece. Um, you can multiple people looking at the same document. Um, it's really easy to um, for students to work together, say two students um, kind of working together on a document, or students giving each other feedback, or teacher giving feedback. I found with the paper notebooks, um, I often kind of bring a sack of notebooks home every night. Um, and here, the notebooks are, are in the cloud, so have access to them from anywhere. In fact, sometimes um, students would be working on the document outside of school. And I would actually be able to see what they were doing and you know, correct a uh, misception or give them feedback right in the moment. Um, kind of incredible that you know, we were outside of school and he was giving this feedback right in the moment. Um, it does. It creates this um, written conversation with the teacher that's ongoing, and it's documented. It's very easy in terms of assessment to kind of see the feedback you've given, how they've responded to that feedback. So it became this really powerful tool for writing. Um, one of the challenges um, with use kind of the, the more traditional, just having an email attached that you said is that you, you lose track of which version you're talking about. Um, and it's true when um, students are collaborating or teachers are collaborating. Um, it, it gets rid of the attachment culture, and you just have one version of the document. And then this accessibility from anywhere um, was really important to me. Um, and so not only can I access all of their notebooks at any time, but so students can get to them and add things to them later. Um, so these features kind of make the Google Doc a really powerful, um, more powerful, um, you know, tool than the, the paper notebook, which is pretty incredible. Um, i just show you some examples um, of what I did in the classroom. Um, one example, um, kind of go back in the paper notebook, we saw what we know and want to know. Um, in class, I had the students um, write about what they know and want to know about plants. Um, and we had it in the context of a conversation in the class, but I had them at their computers, they could be writing what they were sharing um, instead of just sharing verbally. So we did sharing verbally, we did some sharing on the computer. And what's really powerful about that is that multiple students can actually be sharing at the same time, um, and they can be seeing what other students wrote very carefully, um, very clearly. And so it, it created kind of these two levels of communication. And there was kind of the conversation we could have um, as a group, but also there was room for even more um, access for the students and also more sharing with the students by having it all up there. Um, and in fact, what's nice about this um, and often we, we call this a KWL chart because it's what you know um, at the bottom, what you want to know, and, and then eventually you can add what you learned later in the unit. But this becomes a working document. So you can start at the beginning of the, of the unit and have this list of 
what I know and want to know. But I do experience activities as we do more work with the plants. Um, you can actually um, get a lot of other, um, you can add to it, you can add your questions, you can add, um, you know, what new things you know, and you can add what you learned at the bottom. Um, and so that can be that can be a powerful um, way to kind of use this over time with this. And in fact, uh, I I showed a little on the run side. You'll see there's a little comment that I put in. And so you can, as a teacher, you can make comments here, but you can also have students make comments as you go. Um, here's a close up of that. Um, one things I did was I had each student um, their code their comp so that it was easy to kind of visually get a sense of who was adding what. Um, and so each student in the class had their own comment here. Um, color code. I know, um, you know, future. I think there there's going to be even more um, way to kind of access who wrote what. Um, have and some color coding will be kind of automated. Um, but for now, I'm having the students do it. Let's see here. Um, another... I a, a good question that came up. I, there's been several questions that have been asked throughout, and I, I think this one is is pretty relevant to what you're discussing right now. Oh, great. Okay, multiple students can access information, but sometimes you have uh, students who are just so accelerated, they're bored with working with these slower students. How how, how are you managing that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that's great um, about having kind of these multiple levels uh, of, um, of communication in the classroom is you can, you can really differentiate the instruction. So, you know, if, if I go back to this, um, slide here with what one want to know, you know, some kids, the ch the kid who wants to share a lot of what they know, they're not restricted in the way they would be in a verbal conversation where you'd say, I'm sorry, you, you're going to have to stop talking because we have to give other people a chance. You can have them keep writing and they can write all the things that they know um, and they can actually be able to contribute on that level. And then, you know, Students struggling can be using all of this information that's on the page to be accessing that and kind of use it. So in a way, it, it provides a lot more differentiation because each kid can kind of be accessing it at their own level. And then, and then you still work in the opportunities for kids to try to explain what they're thinking to each other. Um, at this point in the unit, I was more in, I wasn't interested in them answering each other's questions because it's it's really what we know before. Um, but as you do this throughout the unit, you can have kids, you know, using the comment feature to be answering questions based on an activity you did. Um, and so kids can really put in as much as they want into this. Um, A's that was sometimes harder and not recognized in the paper notebook. Um, sometimes in the paper notebook, you know, you'd see, you, 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 they could add more to their notebook, but no one kind of saw their notebook and it wasn't kind of this public document in the same way that the Google Doc is, which which is really exciting for kids to feel like, like what they're doing is not only recognized by the teacher, but by the whole class. More technical question, are your students using accounts of uh, Google Apps for Education, or are they using their own accounts? Yeah, so at my school, we're, we, we have a Google Apps for Education um, domain, and so that that does make a few things easier. Like it's much easier to kind of share things across the domain, um, and their accounts are all set up. But all of the stuff I'm doing is actually you could do either way. It's just it's just made a little bit easier through Google Apps for Education, and that's that's what we've been using. Great, Greg. There are some more questions, but I think I'm going to save those ones for the end. Oh okay, no problem. Um, so let me skip here. Another thing that I've used. Um, I've used Google Docs for is um, a note taker, and this this is kind of a cool feature of Google Docs. Um, in a sense, Google Docs can make any um, projector into a smart board. Um, in fact, at my school we do have smart boards, so maybe this is redundant. But um, what I do is a computer in the room, um, and we're my school is a one-to-one -one laptop. So we're fortunate that each com each student can be working on their own computers, but there's a lot of different ways you can configure this, either in a computer lab or with a, a laptop cart. Um, 
And in this case, I had one student be the note taker um, for the class, and that was kind of their job for the week. Um, and they would they would kind of create a narrative of what was going on. And this is kind of part of, of my whole, um, what I talked about before of a student centered classroom. I wanted students to take to, to take more ownership of kind of making sense of the material. Um, and so here they wrote a little narrative of what we did with the materials. Um, and then other students can kind of add in or give them advice either verbally or they can actually go in there and add things or they can make comments on it. But I like this idea of students can take a more active role in kind of defining the notebooks of, of, for the class. And so this was kind of a collaborative document that we used um, to kind of define what we're doing. And it's also nice because students can then look back to that. So there's no, there's no issue of, you know, if a student's thinking about something, they don't have to say, well, I forgot my science notebook at school. They have access to their notebook at night if they're, you know, studying for something. Or they're just, you know, they have access to every student's notebook. They can get a lot of ideas can percol percolate in that way. Um, here's um, just off kind of the drawing feature here. Um, we did an activity with dry ice, so I brought in uh, some dry ice, and we did some experiments, um, and then the students were telling me what they discovered. Um, and as we were talking about it, I would have students who shared things. I'd say, why don't you put that on the Google Doc? And so they got they got really excited kind of making little drawings, and they were really excited how the, the spoon rang when it touched the dry ice, and we had a whole conversation when it rang and when it didn't. Um, they, they, they did a pretty good job of trying to represent things, different phenomena they experienced in the Google Doc. Um, and since everyone was adding to the same one, they could they could add comments on each other's. They could add things to, to what each other is doing. One of the nice features that we'll see later is you, you can, there's actually a small line that comes up that shows where everyone is in the doc. So you don't, you, it, it makes it so that you're not as likely to worry about overwriting what somebody's saying because you, you can kind of see where everybody is in the doc and kind of choose a location that, that works for you. Um, here's an example. Um, we had a, um, I decided to use a Google Doc as, a, as kind of an alternative for a homework assignment. Um, instead of having them, you know, read a certain passage, and each write on their own what they thought about it, and then have a dis then come to class and discuss it. That's kind of the traditional way that you do the science reading. I had them read a certain passage about relative motion, um, and they wrote their reactions to it on a Google Doc, and they actually did that from home, um, and so they could see what everyone was saying as, as the discussion was kind of going on outside of the classroom, um, and then when they came into class. We could have a much deeper discussion based on all their reactions and thoughts about what everybody was saying. We could kind of get deeper into the material because we had already had a chance to kind of share all of our thoughts and respond to each other on the Google Doc, and we could use the classroom time to really get deeper into the material. Um, also, um, the Google Doc is a really powerful way if you're if you're collaboratively writing. Um, and so often I'll pair up students or put them in groups and have them write lab reports or observations. And the, the Google Doc allows you to, to read all these things together. You could be doing it synchronously, you know, during class or asynchronously outside of class. But you can be giving each other feedback. That could be the part, the two partners could be giving each other feedback through the comments. But you can also structure in that other students give feedback or the teacher gives feedback. Um, it's very easy going into the revision history to see, you know, who wrote what and who, uh, you know, in, in terms of the teacher assessment, figuring out exactly what happened in the collaboration process. Um, so all of that, all of those pieces are documented as you're going. But you get this much more um, powerful way to kind of share writing um, rather than having, you know, two students writing independently in their notebook, they can really be working together on something, but you still have have a, a sense of what everybody worked on. Hi, we have another question here. Sure. Asked, there's a, a lot of dynamics that are still not covered real time with online interaction. How do you think these can be improved when it comes to students interacting? Um, could you say that again? Which... This is about because uh, you're you're talking about the like online interaction and and the real time collaborations 
tapping with Google Docs, and somebody has a question about um, saying that our, our dynamics outside of that, and how do you think these can be improved when it comes to student interacting, or maybe just how does the Google Docs interaction play into the interaction in the classroom? I'll okay. about like the dyna just the kind of student to student dynamics of the classroom. Right. Yep. Um, and I think all of teaching involves um, there, there's all classroom management involved, um, and that's, that's just as true with a you know discussion based format as it is in a you know collaborative digital format. Um, and I think it really comes down to setting expectations, and talking about things as they come, but one of the things that's really powerful about the digital um, sharing piece is that everything is documented. So it's it's very easy to kind of take a step back and talk about what happened and have a record of everything that happened. So if if there's kind of changing dynamics, it's almost easier to get a, a snapshot of that, that from you know you have a record of that on every on the actual document. And, and I, I spend a lot of time talking with students about what what's an appropriate comment what's what's a good way to work collaboratively and i think you know that's that's the, the that's the same it's a similar conversation if you work collaboratively you know having an oral discussion as to you know having a collaborative document you're working on and that's that's a big piece of it uh, but i think that's just a big piece of teaching um, and so, it definitely, is something I do in my classroom. Um, that does that answer? Yeah, that's you great. Think that gets to it? Okay, great. Let's look at um, here's another example. Um, so I uh, I can do a lot with um, giving specific comments to to students. So um, one of the things that's nice is you can the team can add in comments as well. Um, here I did. They we're setting up an experiment um, with a control variable, um, growing a plant, um, and I gave them some feedback on the right. And one of the things that's nice is they can, they can actually indicate um, that they read the feedback, and it, Google keeps a record um, of all of the feedback. So you can always go back as a teacher and see what back you gave to a student. Um, and it keeps it in a very nice way. You don't have this. Kind of, um, I remember, you know, before Google Docs, I just have this kind of stack of revisions around lab reports and all the work. And here it's kind of all nested in one document. You have all the information, and it makes it much easier to assess. But I think it also creates a clear line of communication between the student and the teacher. Um, and that's just true if, if you're using peer feedback as well. You get those benefits as well. Um, so I do a lot with, with feedback on the documents. Um, and having students kind of keep an eye on feedback and respond to that. Um, I can look at what changes they made after I gave the feedback as well. Um, just to touch on also, um, one really nice features of, of Google Docs is that it, it allows you to organize all the docs. And so one, one easy way to kind of manage your class is to create a folder. Um, and uh, you're going to get to see a folder um, a little later today. Um, and what we do is um, the folder, they, it's, it's called a collection. So it, it's a little bit like a folder in some sense, but it, it's also a little bit um, like a tag in another sense. Um, and what it does is it keeps all of your docs organized in a way. It's very easy to share materials with students. Um, so I share readings through this or, or various slideshows. Um, it makes it really easy for students to kind of access things later. Um, and so forth, so that all of these documents are, are available. Um, and it also makes it easy for the students to share th things with you. And so the collections is a really important way of organizing your digital science notebook. Um, I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to talk to you here. Um, so I, what I've done here with the, the Google Text documents, um, already kind of shown you a lot of the powerful features of going to a digital science notebook. It, it gives a lot of features that you didn't have in the paper notebook. But I say that everything I've talked about so far is kind of equally applicable to almost any discipline, English, social studies. Um, that You saw a lot of examples of writing, of representing um, information, and all that. But I want to kind of focus specifically on science in this sense. It is digital science notebook. So I'm going to show you a piece 
um, from a presentation I did at the National Science Teachers Association called Sharing Digital Data. I'm going to use this to um, show you three examples of where I really took science experiments and used a lot of the features of Google Apps to kind of communicate um, how students to kind of take their notebook to the next level. Um, and one of the I talked about in my presentation, and as Tian, I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, is that really the world of science is changing. There's this big emphasis on shared data, um, and how you share data and how you share digital data. Um, in fact, um, so I think I hear that the, a lot of journals require scientists to share their data um, digitally and made available so that people can access it. Um, here's a, um, you've probably heard of Creative Commons. Um, they, they have a data branch where they're, they're making data available that you, you can kind of um, use the Creative Commons license um, for data as well. Um, I found this great website called Galaxy Zoo, um, which has um, which is really a, a portal for um, at, just, you know, people can log in and classify galaxies. Um, and so what they found was that um, by using this kind of social media um, way of classifying galaxies, the, the people who logged in could actually do a better job classifying the galaxies than professional scientists um, because they had access to this, this big group of people who could um, who could actually do the work. Um, and you'll see that the interface is a little bit on the right. It asks you kind of what it looks like, and you kind of choose from those boxes. Uh, and this website has been incredibly successful. It's been it's people have been classifying these galaxies, and then scientists have been using this information um, to to actually do their work and and kind of study um, various parts of space that they have they have um, detailed um, data on. Um, so the reason I'm showing you kind of some of these tools is because I think we need to be doing more with bringing digital data into the classroom. And I think the Digital Science Notebook is a really powerful way to do that. Um, so I'm going to skip here a little bit um, and go right into the first example um, just for the interest of time. And the first example um, is an experiment that I've done for a while. Um, it's called the Marble, I call it the Marble and Ramp Experiment. Experiment, um, and I give them a ramp, and you can kind of see in the picture here. And they use a protractor. This is with the fifth grade class again, and some blocks to make a certain angle. And the the question we investigate is how does the angle of a ramp affect the distance traveled um, by the marble? Um, and it's an interesting experiment that gets them really thinking about velocity and gravity and all of these things. Um, also allows them to go through the scientific process of you know how do I collect data how it can how, how do I make it accurate um, what what process do I go through here you see two students kind of working on the project um, and they hear that this is when they did it with the paper notebook um, so this is an older picture um, but and this, this is kind of what I was with the with the paper notebook they made chart and they entered the data. Uh, and they, they write up a lab report about it and do a lot of thinking about it. Um, but ultimately, I found that it was very hard for them to kind of share that data um, effectively because, you know, you'd have to sh pass around the notebooks or write it up on the board. Um, and so what I did was I used um, Sheets, which is the Google Sheet program. Um, and then they could actually enter their data into a common spreadsheet. Uh, so here you see there's the angle on the left, and then each group entered their data. Um, and I made a little spot where they could kind of write uh, some of their notes about what they're noticing. Um, and Google Spreadsheet also has some really nice features. It's somewhat very similar to Excel. So there's that kind of um, advantage in the learning curve. Um, but you really look at the data through a graph. Here's a graph um, that we made as a class from the data. But what we found was that the students were focusing on all of the data. So instead of just looking at their particular data, actually looking at all the whole class's data, which made it a very different feel for the experiment because suddenly kind of all the data was accountable. And suddenly when you were 
creating this data and recording it, you were kind of part of this class experiment and not just kind of writing your thing in your notebook. And it made every student kind of more more interested in the process and, and they felt kind of more responsible to be accurate in their data and to think about what accuracy meant. Um, and here were just some of their comments they wrote. If you look at the graph, they are all just in the middle. Um, and I think here they're talking about how it was it was a great distance around 45 degrees. Um, that like on 45 degrees, that makes it go farther. Um, and then another student wrote, if you look at 80 degrees, it is a lot more all over the place. The numbers are high and low. At 20 degrees, the numbers are closer together. And this was an interesting thing they were noticing about kind of the spread of the data, that there was a different of spread at different parts in the chart. And that led to an interesting conversation that we had um, just about why data would kind of vary more at certain points. Um, I think having the students look at the data as a whole led to a lot more deeper scientific thinking than they were just recording the data in their notebook and kind of just focused on a very small number um, of data points. And so I think that's that's a really um, important advantage um, of, of digital science notebooks is it, it can get you focused on um, you know, we're thinking about data and sharing data and, and looking at data in a different way. Um, here's another project that I want to show you. We did a, a study, um, our motion curriculum on pedometers, um, and we've got these little Omron pedometers, um, and the students, um, they, they, were, they were working in pairs, and they would each carry it um, for a day. Um, here you can see um, they were actually recording their data of how many steps they took in a, a Google spreadsheet and they write the things. And one of the things that was interesting that came out of this is there was a lot of inaccuracy in the data, but it actually led to some powerful conversations about what, you know, how is it measuring how many steps you took. Um, and then there was this whole piece of, you know, the whole health piece of, of what it what it means to take more steps or less steps in a day and, and what... You know, we, we look at, you know, interdisciplinary way at this. Um, but again, by having all the data out there and accessible to the kids, they have these kinds of rich conversations. And they could, we could have the class discussions, but they also had that kind of the additional time. They could look at the data and make comments on the data um, outside of those little discussions. And so students kind of came more prepared to talk about things, um, and there was more interaction going on than if I just had a conversation with, with a chart up in, um, in the room in a, in a way that they didn't have access to it. Um, here I'll just give you, um, they were writing about what what paths they saw in their data. Um, and I have a little video clip uh, that I want to show you just of what it looks like when everyone's writing on the document. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and switch that off. So you need to go up in, in the WebEx tool, up in the, the window, there's something that I think says under share button, or you can just stop sharing and then share QuickTime. Okay, click stop. Uh, great. And then you can share application in due time, and then you can jump back. Great, thanks. That was really easy. Okay, so here's a little, I'm just bigger so that you guys see it just an example of what it looks like when a lot of students are writing at the same time. Um, and th there's a little bit of audio, but that's not really so important. Um, it's really powerful when kids are adding to the same document. Um, and here you see a picture of what the, the students are re really focused and excited to kind of be able to put their things up there, um, get to see what everyone um, writing. It did take some time for them to kind of get used to this format, just like any new format. They need some time to kind of think about that and and about what you know what is the best wish here. That okay. I'm going to jump back to the presentation here. Okay. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do. Um, so I have two different projects that I've done around this. I think I'm going to have us move into kind of trying out some of the tools. Um, and so let me let me move through 
here. And there's another example in there that you can look at, um, and maybe I'll, I'll also I'm, – I'm planning to do um, another – possibly another part to Digital Science Notebook, so I can include that in there. Um, I want to show you – here we go. Uh, we're going to do a digital science notebook activity, um, and the one's going to—it's kind of cool. Um, one of the things that's really powerful um, about Google Docs is there's a lot you can do with it, even with big groups. Um, and so what I have here is I have a little um, form to fill out, and so you click on this link, the tinyurl.com digital science, and if you go to that link, what, you'll you'll just fill out your name. Here, in fact, why don't I take that um, and, and I got the wrong one. Science. So if you go here, you get a um, a form that you can fill out. And if you fill out this, oh wait, For some reason it's not coming up here. Wait, digital. I thought I just did this. What? Is it possible to share the link through the? Um... Usually, type it into the chat box if you want to just type it. Okay, into, that might um, be easy. Chat box is the one with the little, little, so people, and then you can send it out to everybody. Okay, let me do that. There you go. Sorry about this. Um, one of one of the guests was able to pull up that tiny URL, so I just oh, it did work out. Everybody. Okay, yeah. for some reason, maybe I just typed it in wrong. Um, but uh, if you enter in that um, that URL, what it's going to do is it's going to it's add you to a list. Um, and there, uh, one of the things that's really great um, about Google Docs is it it only has a lot of features already built in. But using Google Apps Script, you can actually um, make more features um, and make and kind of tailor applications to what you want. So what I've done here um, is when you fill out that form, it actually adds you to a collection. Um, and so you, if you go to your Google Docs page, if you go to um, you know doc.google.com, um, you can then get to um, if you ref you'll, you'll have to refresh the page after you fill out that form. But once you fill out that form, you actually have Science Notebooks webinar August 2011. Now it's not going to show up under what's called My Collections because it's it's mine, but it will show up here under Collections Shared with Me. Um, so you click on that, you should be able to see it. I think um, if I close this. Is going to go a little faster, and if you click on this this folder, you'll get to see um, thing. Right now, there's nothing in there. Um, in fact, what I might do is later I will add um, my presentation to that folder so that you'll get to see that. Um, and this this can all be a space where we can share things. But what I ask you to do. And let me go back to the presentation because it kind of summarizes it there. For some reason, 
things slow down when I try to access this. It's because I have all this WebEx stuff open. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to um, create a Google Doc, and I want your doc to kind of think about um, how can digital science notebooks be used um, in your classroom. So let's let's use the um, the Google Docs interface to kind of shape some of our idea. Each person is going to make their own Google Doc, and the way you do that is you just go to Create New, um, and you can create a new document here. Um, and you call it whatever you want. Let's see here. Then once you create your document, you can um, usually title it by clicking over here under the um, where it says the title document, um, and you write your ideas here in the text area. Um, and actually, if you go back to your um, your docs page here, where you see the list, your you Google the list. Um, let's just take this here. I'm just going to clear out this box so that I can see everything. Really, it goes much faster than this. I don't know if it's related to the web text. Please. I haven't, I haven't had this. little bit muffled, but while uh, while you're going through this, I'll just confirm. Somebody was asking uh, how you went from the form to sharing the collection, and I believe you just took the email addresses that people submit and just uh, copied that into the share the sharing box of for the collection. Is that right? Well, I actually automated it. To automate it. And, and so how did what, you automate what it? What you what you can do is the, there's something called Google Apps Script, and that you know that's a little more of an advanced application. Um, and what you can do is you can actually, um, as the form submits, it can take the um, the email address that was entered. And I actually added in a little thing to see if it looked like a valid email address as well. So that it um, that's a little thing you can add in. But what it, you can actually automatically add it to the collection. And so that's a nice little feature. That, um, and I, I'm I'm happy to share that um, that that. I'll put that code in the um, in the coin as well, so that you can kind of see it and play around with it. Um, that is a more advanced feature, but as I said, like it's nice to be able to kind of take it at different levels. So you can start with a very basic kind of um, digital science notebook setup, um, and then do something a little bit um, more advanced, like adding them those things automatically. Now, for some reason, this is. Uh, Still spill a little. It's stuck on this document that I made. Maybe. Let me introduce a couple other questions then, since we're sure. closing at the end of the webinar. We have somebody who mentioned that lots of admins like the graphic organizer and insist on an example given to the student first. How can you do that with a digital notebook? When by a graphical, like a graphical organizer for your ideas? I'm not actually sure. If the questioner who wrote that wants to clarify, I am not exactly sure what they mean by uh, the graphic organizer. I mean, I can, I, I will say that one, one of the challenges around digital notebooks that I'd, I'd say is the one thing where uh, I still ha don't feel like it's a hundred percent. As good as the paper notebook is around drawing, um, it is hard, it is a little bit harder 
to kind of get get drawings um, to work out the way you want to because um, we just don't maybe we just don't have the right you know tablet software to kind of put drawings right on the computer. We have done um, a lot with having kids. I've done a lot with having kids draw something on a piece of paper, um, and then um, uh, we, and, and we have we have Mac, so there's a little camera on the top of the screen, and they can take a picture, um, and you can import an image into a doc or onto a site. So it is really easy to add um, that you've drawn by paper. Also, um, one of the things I wanted you know, that my and you saw this in the dry ice example. Um, is that the students can use the there's a drawing tool in Google Docs, um, and actually if you go to Docs, here, you'll see that it, there, there's a nice drawing tool where you can add drawings and you can make kind of graphic organizer. And there's also a table function if you want to do kind of a you know a graphic organizer in that sense as well. So there is some. It looks like the the clarification is that um, there's an example. His friend teaches Avid, and they have program specific organizers. And I was wondering if that was possible to use in a digital notebook. Probably not familiar with Avid or those program specific organizers. So this might be a question we need to answer um, later on. But Greg, yeah. did you did you have anything else to add? No, I mean I think there's a lot you can do. Around organizers, but if, if there's something... Oh, Greg, you got really soft. I don't know if the, the phone went away from you. Oh, I don't think so. Okay, go. You're back. Good. Good. Um, I, so I think there's a lot of opportunities to use graphic organizers, but if you want something specific, you just have to set it up in a certain way. Okay, and there are, there are several other questions here about... Um, of about about science notebooks in general, but I wanted to see if anybody else has any specific questions about what Greg has done with his notebook, about questions about the docs, uh, Google Docs, or any of the other pieces that he showed, the drawings piece, anything else. Feel free to throw those in there as well. Um, so, it said uh, the word evaluation at the beginning of your URL, which is causing problems. Maybe that's what one of the issues was. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, when when I tried to enter it in? Yeah, I think so. Um, so somebody asked, can Google Docs software be used to edit PDFs? So Google Docs allows you to upload PDFs, and you can share PDFs, but it does not allow you to actually modify them. However, Google Docs does have a built-in OCR um, technology, so you can convert that PDF file into a Google Docs document. So if you want to, you actually can edit PDFs in that they become an editable document. So uh, good question. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I've done other. the PDR works pretty well. I've done I've used that for some things. Let's see. So this was a kind of more oh, more here. Do you start a new document or notebook for each unit? If not, doesn't that running record get quite long? I usually have actually um, a different doc for every kind of every topic. So I'll have some docs that are collective for the, for a class, like the ones I showed you where they were working together on it. But often, you know, every experiment can be a doc. It's sort of like, I mean, in a way, it, it's like a digital binder. Um, and just like a binder is a collection of papers that you can organize, you know, in different ways with tabs, the Google Docs collection is a digital binder, and you can make each, each lab or each activity a different doc, but then you can organize it however you want, and it has the nice search functionality that you can pick up the documents you want, and you can them, and you can use all the Google search um, features to actually find things. So you can actually find, you know, which documents did this student co comment on, or which documents did this student not comment on by using a little minus sign. So a lot, it, it gives you kind of the full range of binder options, plus the digital search piece. That's really nice. I think it's, a, it's good to note that the collections are kind of like folders, except that you can put more than you know, just your normal Google Docs in there. You can upload PDFs and other types of items in there. So I think it's up to you. You could perhaps create one long document, or you could segment them and keep them within one collection. So uh, to answer that question, let's see. Um, in general, 
somebody was asking about, I believe at the beginning you were kind of talking about student-centered learning, and uh, somebody was asking about the, what, like, I guess, what do you think about the Khan Academy is doing where it's coach-based or supportive and allowing the student to learn at their own pace? And did you have any thoughts about that, or do you kind of incorporate that into what your digital science notebooks are as the learning is self taking place offline and, and the coaching happens in the classroom? I think that's that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think a lot of experimenting has been going on around the flipped classroom, having you know more of that kind of self-paced work happening outside the classroom and things that aren't necessarily um, collaborative happening inside the classroom. Um, I think that's that, that's a great um, approach to things. I think one of the things that I really like about the digital science notebook is having the digital piece and face-to-face -face kind of working together um, together in one space. I think that really makes the most powerful environment um, because the things that you get out of actually being in the same room and having that interaction and, and the things that you get out of having that digital interaction, which gives you some advantages like moving at your own pace and, and getting to add things um, at your own level, um, by having both of those, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. Um, and you get more than you would from either one of them by themselves. And uh, another couple questions in here. Somebody wanted to um, make sure that you, Eddie's aware with Google Docs, you can actually make your documents to be shared just as view only. So if you don't want people to edit them and just let a select group edit them, you can do that as well. Um, and then a question here about, I think it's more of a question about your one-to-one -one classroom. Do your students carry them around all day or do they stay in the room? They stay in their homeroom. Um, I actually see them outside of their homeroom because I'm the science teacher. Um, so they carry them to me um, and back to their homeroom. So they stay in the classroom at my school, but they carry them to science. Um, and that's how we're structured with that. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Greg. And I apologize if we didn't get to all of the questions here, but I'm going to create a, a doc based on, on these questions, and Greg and I will go in and, and answer any of the ones that we didn't get to through the webinar. So, right. again, Can I um, just Greg, say one other thing sure. before we head out? Um, so I, it, it, was, it was going slow, but now it seems like it's back. I can see that some people added um, their documents. You can see on the screen here. Um, they added Oh, sorry about that. Right. And they added their documents um, to the collection. Um, and so now these four, do these five documents um, are all added, and you have access so you can give each other feedback on those as well. Um, and so this can kind of be a, a place where you can kind of use this share um, ideas. Um, I'll add some other documents to this to kind of show some examples that, that answer your questions as well. Um, but you, this gives you a sense of how a, you could set one way you could set up your digital science notebook classroom is by having this collection. Now we have access to all of these things. Um, and one of the things that's nice about these collections is they inherit, um, they inherit things below. So if we put folders in here, and if we put collections inside of here, you can organize it almost like you would a binder, but everyone in this, in this workshop would have access to all of those different things. Um, so it, that's a nice way to kind of set up your digital science classroom using uh, uh, Google Docs. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. And again, this, this uh, was recorded, so we will be able to send out a link to this, as well as Greg will also share his uh, presentation and uh, the, some of the other resources, like his, his collection and, that, and the code for that automatic script to add people to a collection. And uh, you'll receive that email later this week or early next week. And again, you can also access that website I sent at the very beginning that has a link to all of our past professional development webinars. So thank you again for joining us, and thank you, Greg, for leading. Okay.